Good morning. Happy Tuesday. It's 8.30 a.m. and that means that it is time for a little tea and wild thoughts with me. <laughs> Your girl, the beauty influencer. So I hope that everybody is blessed and well this morning. Good morning. Um, I hope that everybody is feeling good. You may be watching this at a later date and time on YouTube. Welcome, welcome. Good morning. Come on in. Uh, you may be watching this at a later date and time on YouTube. So if you are, you know, thank you so much. Please like, share, subscribe, support your girl. Um, you're always welcome to join a live conversation here. Tuesday mornings, 8.30 a.m. on Instagram. You can also, just, you know, doing a little housekeeping, um, check out products from my self-care store. There is a um, link in my bio and in the information section below. Um, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, I just got a notification about my own live. <laughs> that's weird. So anyway, this is the chakra spray. Um... You know, I'm all about the amazing vibes. So this is orange blossom water, sweet orange oil, lemongrass. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It smells amazing. It has the seven chakra stones here in the bottom to charge that water so that you have nothing but good energy. Um, aromatherapy is a real thing. I believe in that. I've had amazing testimonies about using this product. It just smells good and it's lovely. So if you want to support a black business, you know, I would indeed appreciate if you would support mine. Um, just doing a little Palo Santo here, getting the vibe right. You can also come and check me out at Essential Aesthetics and Laser in Charlotte, North Carolina. That is where I provide skincare services uh, like organic facials, gua sha massage, uh, laser hair removal, chemical peels whatever it is we got it we got it for you um i'm learning so much there I'm learning new lasers getting ready to learn a skin pen and i'm super excited and if you want to stay up to date with everything that i have going on you can just sign up for my email list at the link in my bio also on my website so that you can just stay updated and i will just you know you don't have to remember all of that <laughs> So, good morning, everybody. I hope that you are feeling blessed. Hope you are feeling well. Um, welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm going to do a quick recap of last week. And, you know, we'll get started there. Um, I have something that's kind of been in my spirit to talk about this morning. Y'all know how I do. The conversation is it's wild thoughts. It's just what it is. So, anywho... Uh, so we, of course, have Valentine's Day on Sunday. Feel free to leave in the comments if you felt loved, you know, whether it was self-love or, um, you know, you were celebrating with someone that you love, another human being, whatever form that shows up in, you know, I'm all about love. Um, mine was lovely. It was lovely. Got some nice gifts, you know, had a very nice evening, so, um that was cool i also got a chance to watch um yes thank you for making it such a lovely valentine's day my love um i also got a chance to watch judas and the black messiah i don't know if you guys have seen that yet um it's on hbo max about fred ham fred hampton Fred Hampton. I always get I always get Fred Hammond and Fred Hampton a little mixed up. Um powerful, powerful story in black history. I'm here for all the all the black history and like all these networks that are going in with making sure that they're showing black content and they produce black content. Um really this is this we are in the midst of a revolution y'all in terms of being able to really hear our own stories and tell our own stories and just rewrite history you know like it's it's an interesting time um to be witnessing this because you know those of us who are my age you know 40s um late 30s you know we didn't grow up with that so 
highly recommend that you check it out if you you know have the bandwidth for it because it is um quite violent uh but amazing story um about our history definitely want to check that out um just on a personal note there was a huge ice storm here um out in the country where me and my dad live in Henderson <clears throat> it didn't happen in Charlotte where I work <laughs> two and a half hours away from here and so my dad who's blind late stage diabetes those of you who don't know that I take care of him um I'm a caregiver for him so yeah my dad was here with like without power no microwave no nothing blind no heat no power for two days um so that was a little startling and it it just it it really jolted me a bit um which brought me to talking about what i want to talk about today and just how challenging it really is to be an entrepreneur <clears throat> i've had a, a quite a few conversations in the past week or so um, with other people too so you know hopefully this hits home for some other people maybe it's inspiring I just share my story in hopes that it always helps someone else um but it is challenging y'all it is it is one another like I know people hear that you hear that <laughs> if you're on your own journey I'm sure that you know but it is on another level at times to not only just try to run your own businesses but to and i know miss miko thank you for coming on in girl i know you know how challenging entrepreneurship can really be and more so to push original ideas to fruition um you know the things that hope all is well with with your dad yeah you know he he pushed through thank you thank you for saying that um my dad's a tough guy <laughs> you know those are his words um, I was very worried about him, but he was okay. And a lot of entrepreneurship to me is very faith-based. You know, you have to, yes, I know you know, girl. I know you know. Um, you have to sometimes just really sit back with, you know, the vision that has been planted inside of you and allow things to just shift and adjust and just allow God to show up <laughs> and do his thing because there's a lot of shit that you just can't do anything about and that was definitely one of them um so i just kind of want to share <clears throat> you know some of my journey of entrepreneurship for those who are not as familiar with me you know some people have just kind of come into the story and like where i am now um but i have to remind myself sometimes that like this is my second run <laughs> like of building a brand and building a business um it really takes about 10 years minimum to really make something pop in terms of consistent profit, you know, client-based success. Most of the people that you see online and on Instagram, um, even if, if they're, you know, have shifted their brand or renewed it, you know, they've been doing what they've been doing for quite some time if it is successful. There is just no such thing as overnight success. It just doesn't work like that even if that work is just internally and in, in working on yourself um so if you even want a business because i know a lot of people who are in the nine to five life you know tend to think that entrepreneurship is just complete freedom and you just get to do what you want um just no mm -mm. it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort um to to make these things successful you know um so like i said this is my second go round. i started off as a makeup artist in 2005 2005 i'm getting old um and absolutely no one else at the time was doing what i was doing or or thinking about it the way that i was thinking about it, at least not in my area um I knew that I wanted to do makeup as a service. I did not want to particularly just work at a counter. At the time, you know, Mac was super popping or whatever, and I and I worked at Mac. I had a job at Mac Cosmetics, um, and it just goes to show. I mean, you know, up until now, just just putting this note in here now. 
people at Mac had just took a 25% pay cut. You know, at the time it was, you know, we were making top money in terms of just being in the retail industry and Mac was the top of the line, but things change and things shift and evolve. And I just knew I didn't want to particularly work for a brand, um, a cosmetic brand. I didn't just want to be someone working at the counter and selling products. I wanted to actually give the service of makeup and be an artist. Um, and it was extremely challenging at the time. This is in Charlotte, North Carolina. You know, it wasn't New York. It wasn't Atlanta or Miami, you know, where they have big events and things like that. You know, these are everyday women. Um, it was very challenging to make consistent money um, and to basically kind of convince women that, yeah, this is something that you need. Uh, you need to get done and you need to pay me to do it. They all had the relationship just with going to a makeup counter. And so I was one of the first people in Charlotte, black women, I'll say, black women, um, to just take that journey and offering makeup as a service and owning my own studio and just, you know, I had to, um, I did work at the makeup counter part time, I will say that. So I had to supplement my income. Welcome. Um, I also had to build a portfolio with local photographers, okay? And that also helped me to kind of, um, you know, they would help me get jobs and get work too. And I invested the little bit of money that I was making right back into my business, into marketing and my image and taking more classes and buying more products. And it, that was the process for at least five to six years you know just the hustle alone um blood sweat and tears i mean literally literally i remember just not being able to pay my rent and like having to move home and you know but i still had this vision and you know this drive to believe that doing makeup full time was something that i could do um <clears throat> and i did i pushed i pushed and and I and I did it. Um, I did tons of free work, you know, and I also I did work with celebrities for a bit. Um, some of those celebrities are, you know, like I was when Fantasia had her um show on VH one, I was the key makeup artist for that show. Um, that was some time ago. Um there's a list of them, but I realized that, that whole industry was bullshit and that it 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 wasn't going to pay the bills. It wasn't something that um, I could really depend on. And so, um, but eventually, you know, and, and having that credibility working on those shows allowed me to get more clout, you know, and book more clients. And eventually I did um, start booking bigger jobs. I started to understand the industry more. The whole point is, I had to be in the industry for that amount of time to really see how it worked, um, build a client base, like I said, and just, you know, get the credentials that I needed um, and really figure out what I wanted to do, which was to be in the fashion industry. And so before you knew it, I really was um, in the same room with the people that I, the magazines that I was looking at and that I aspired to be in in the very beginning, <clears throat> I was in the same room with those people. Um, Pat McGrath and Anna Wintour, Vogue magazine. Um, I did it, you know, and it's like as I sit here <laughs> in Henderson, North Carolina with my dad who's sick. Um, I mean, he's okay right now, but, you know, just in general, like, taking care of him. My point is, the things that I've had to push through and the things that I did not anticipate going through. Um, and as I continue to, like, shift my brand and, and rebuild, I just had... It's, it's amazing the amount of self-talk I've had to have in the, the journey of building up myself in in the times that just absolutely nobody believed in me like again and that's the thing about working with celebrities and all that people are around when that stuff is happening but when real life starts happening you know people tend to disappear um 
they don't want to be a part of you know the ugly parts they want to be a part of the shiny parts you know and things that um look good being attached to you know and so that's also a lesson in entrepreneurship um everybody want to be attached to your success you know it's like a what's that story the little red hen you know like everybody you know want to eat the cake at the end but when you you know getting the wheat and the flour and you're grinding it up and you the butter and you're churning it and all that other kind of stuff you know people don't want to be around for that a lot of that stuff is done in the dark it's done alone um you know there were plenty of times that i was told you know i need to just go get a regular job um and i needed to to basically just give up on my vision um but i didn't you know i didn't and so when you see these people who are out here I just, I want my entrepreneurs to be encouraged. You know, I want, um, I want you to know like whatever space you're in, you know, that you just have to keep pushing. If you have a vision and you, and you know, and especially you don't see people out there doing it like that, um, stay the course, stay the course. It's so freaking hard. <laughs> it is so it's so hard, um, but stay the course, you know, you just, you just have to, um, a lot of it is connected to purpose. Good morning. A lot of it is connected to, to things that are much deeper. I, again, thought that me doing makeup was completely about, um, you know, doing makeup, but that is exactly what brought me to sharing my stories with people, to them sharing their stories with me, to talking about healing on a much deeper level and how beauty really is a personal revolution, especially for women of color, you know, and in a, um, in a society and in a world that hasn't represented us uh, in the best light, you know, us loving ourselves and doing what we need to do for ourselves and feeling good about ourselves is actually a personal revolution. You know, there's so many people that I've met and been able to connect with and talk to and it's really so much bigger than me just touching faces at the end of the day. So, you know, again, I just, I, I hear a lot of people in the shift I, you know it was pouring down raining last night um here there have been times in my spirit where literally i can feel you know the whole atmosphere shifting it's like a like a cleansing you know that's happening um especially when you've just gone through so much adversity and life has just hit you with god knows whatever <laughs> Um, because it really can't happen that way. Good morning, Tracy. Um, but, you know, when those shifts are happening, um, again, you just, you just have to really dig in and, and stay the course. It's, it's sound, I'm just, I'm, I'm saying it, <laughs> and I know that, again, it doesn't, um, and Trace, you know, too, I'm just talking about entrepreneurship. I'm talking about how challenging it is, you know, to keep yourself encouraged, to keep going when nobody's believing in your vision, you know, and only you can really see it at the end. Um, how a lot of us in our business journeys, you know, have, um, we're in the midst of, of shifting our businesses. Um, and going to the next level, how it's taken 10 years, you know, it takes 10 years minimum to really build these businesses. It's all an energy exchange and cultivation. Thank you for sharing your journey. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you for listening. And thank you for being a part of it, you know. Um, even me, you know, and I say this fairly often, but me sitting here when I started Teen Wild Thoughts, <laughs> 
y'all have no idea like if sometimes i need to just go out and show y'all what henderson looks like like there's absolutely nothing here <laughs> and so to go from being in these rooms with celebrities you know anna wintour and uh donatella versace to to living in freaking podunk backwater usa um yeah that was a shift <laughs> like i had to find a way to still be me and to push my platform forward and to you know just keep going so and i had never been the type of person to just sit here and do lives like never so it's been interesting um but it's really helped me evolve um So whatever you're doing, guys, you know, stay the course. Po and dunk. <laughs> Still fabulous, girl. I'm trying. I mean, and, and even now, again, I work two and a half hours away every single weekend. I'm still pushing, still pushing through. Um, and like something like the ice storm that happened with my dad uh, this past week. Those are things I can't anticipate. I, I, I tried to set it up so he'll be all right have to stay the course cannot get shifted off have to just keep that vision clear um so yes <sighs> and let me just say too um sometimes business can get to a point where it's successful but you're miserable and that's not the key you know no matter how successful things look on the outside um think one of the, the key things for entrepreneurs is to make sure that you feel fulfilled and that's what's going to keep you going is being passionate about your business um feeling purposeful you know enjoying what you do you know at the end of the day we can all go work for somebody else be miserable but been there for sure it, it's a thing this is exactly why supporting a black business because Target isn't caregiver to a family. Every dollar spent in black business helps a black person. And that, again, is the revolution. <laughs> you know, like, it's deep. I don't want to get too deep in these, you know, 30 minutes that we have here. But at the end of the day, um, we were brought here as workers, you know, part of the work, working force, the working class. The whole American system is based on this. So anytime, again, that you see somebody really trying to push original thoughts and an original vision forward, you know, so what? I mean, you can put your dollars wherever you want, you know, but so what? It doesn't look like everybody else is like at the end of the day. And it, and it takes time. It takes time to get things to the point where they look like they do in Target and we need each other we need community like it's the thing so i'm grateful to each and every person who also has been around since you know i was just a makeup artist um i'm grateful you know for the community that i have you know you guys that just show up show up for this conversation and just you're a part of that I want to be supporting everything that everybody else is doing. So feel free, you know, to um, to tag yourselves. You know, I want to continue to create my platform in a way that everybody can benefit. Everybody can grow and everybody can blossom. And we can create this beautiful life, you know, that we are trying to all create here. Don't nobody want to be miserable? We did that 400 years. So entrepreneurs, be encouraged. I'm going to share my wild thought of the day. And even if you're not an entrepreneur, we still appreciate you. Like, everybody's needed in this, this funnel, this, this thing to make it go around. So, you know, those of you who are supporting entrepreneurs, um, we don't take that lightly, you know. Um, just be encouraged. You know, we all have to be encouraged in this shift, in this time. So, uh, my wild thought is, it's no longer enough to just purchase products and services from entrepreneurs. Believing in their movement and the reason they use their gifts to sustain their lives is the new wave. Meaning, um, 
you know, because we're very quick <laughs> in those journeys of building, especially myself, who has a product line that I've been building since 2016, just started, you know, giving gifts away and things like that. Um, we're very quick to not understand how powerful we are in, in giving negative feedback as well. Um, yes, you want to help people be better, you know, but the, the complacency sometimes and just the negativity it just doesn't help. <laughs> it just doesn't help. So, you know, understand that you're supporting a vision. You're not just, you're not just purchasing products. You're not just purchasing services. You are supporting purpose. Um, when you are supporting and I'm saying entrepreneurs in general, you know, of course, black people, you know, I'm, I'm black, you know, um, but entrepreneurs in general, because I um, also work for another entrepreneur, you know, that's, that's part of where I'm learning and getting my funds from. And she's not a black woman, and she still goes through the same struggles, you know, with that growth. Um, and it's again in, in community it's nice to be able to have certain conversations with her her understanding where i'm coming from um i understand where she's coming from and in the risks you know that are being taken to continue to grow and build so it's not easy it's not easy i commend each and every one of you who are pushing original visions forward um I've said this before but I'll say it again if I'm, I'm just sharing Earl Nightingale you have to be careful what you're tuned into you know in these phases of the shift too and when you're not when you may feel a little discouraged and so um, check out Earl Nightingale on YouTube a lot of the stuff that he said back then about manifestation uh, miracle I'm just gonna share this really quickly too I shared with Miracle yesterday um, something that I manifested <laughs> recently. Um, I'm not going to give every detail about it because that's my business. But I literally wrote down how much money I wanted to make. Watch your circle as well. Absolutely. The people who are speaking into you. Um, and it may shift. It may shift and change. You know. Um that whole circle of people in my makeup phase, makeup artist phase, um, has completely shifted, you know, to where I am right now. Some of them are, you know, of course, still here. But so anyway, check out Earl Nightingale on YouTube if you need some encouragement. You want to know about manifestation. I have a video on YouTube about manifestation, literally how to do it, how to write it out. I did this right at the end of the year. Um, so make sure you check out that video if you have not seen it. Uh, yeah, I just manifested a lot more money. It's real. Um, write the vision, make it plain. I say it all the time. And again, just continue to be encouraged. Continue to continue to build your beautiful life. You know, that is what it's all about. Beauty is so much bigger than this one dimensional stuff. When I started out, I thought it was about makeup. That's not what it's about at all. So I'm grateful I can share my story in a way that hopefully encourages others. I hope that you all have an absolutely beautiful Tuesday. I will check y'all out next Tuesday at 8.30. I will be right here. Um, make sure you sign up for that email list if you have not. Because there's a lot of cool things that are coming up. Um... Thank you all for being here. If you're on YouTube, again, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the share button, and I will see y'all next week. God willing. Peace.